Hi, I'm Sandy Rask. I'm just going to give it a second because I am never 100% sure when the dial is still spinning if, uh, if I'm live. Ah, looks like I'm live. This is great. I hope everyone had a great weekend. I'm thrilled to be back here. I'm Sandy Rask. This is the Food 2.5 Kitchen. And this is the place where we find twice the flavor and half the calories. And we're thrilled. Hey, John Clark, how are you doing? I think this is going to be a recipe that you love because I know how you love the, uh, the peppers. Catherine, how are you doing? How's your new puppy? <laughs> Such cute videos I've seen. Donna, so nice to see you. Rhonda, oh, so glad you came because we can talk about the um, the vegan options here. There's a ton of them um, that we can do with this dish. This dish is awesome. I'm, I'm really pleased. So the dish tonight, uh, I'm going to let people just keep coming on, but the dish tonight that we're doing is Cole Cannon stuffed peppers. Um, and Cole Cannon may not be something that um, everyone's familiar with. Cole Cannon is, um, is originally an Irish dish. It's from somewhere in the 16th or 17th century. I, I saw sort of uh, varying remarks on, on actual dates and who it was tied back to. But Cole Cannon is a, um, is a Gaelic term that really means um, white cabbage head. You know the Irish, they're, they're pretty obvious people. So this was a dish of uh, originally of boiled potatoes and um, and boiled cabbage you know the irish they didn't have a lot of flavor but we are going to um to find a lot of flavor they're doing a lot more cold cannon now cold cannon generally is a really heavy dish it's got a ton of cream and a ton of butter in it but you know me i i tend to bypass all the dairy and find a lot of great flavor in a lot of different ways to uh to do this so let me just scroll down and see ah Hey, Karen. Oh, I'd love to hear what funny thing happened. Oh, you added microgreens. I love that. I cannot wait to hear how you like them. Hey, Christina. Oh, my gosh. I love... Oh, my gosh. Did you add microgreens to your um, to your smoothie, did you say, and, and, not, um, and not rinse them? I think I'm following the story correctly. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Shannon. Hi, Lisa. So nice to see all of you. So I've started a couple of things because you know this is a weeknight and I want to make sure that we get done um, in about 15, maybe 20 minutes. And, and this is one of those dishes that has a bunch of different pieces to it. So the things I started, I had half a dozen potatoes, about this size. Nothing too, nothing too spectacular, just, you know, just your regular old, um, you know, Irish potato. And these are kind of on the small side. So I used about six of them. If I had larger ones, I think I put three to, two to three of them in the, um, uh, in the, in the shopping list. But whatever you have, you can make to, to what it is. So the proportions are roughly greens to potatoes, in my world, 50-50. Um, and I, you know, I don't do any, um, I don't do any dairy. So what I've done, you're going to love this, is I've cut the potatoes up. I cut them to this size. Okay. Then, um, and I cut all six of them. I put them in a pan and I put them in here with this chicken broth. So for my vegan friends, this could be veggie broth, but you know, I love to start the, um, the flavor and the moisture right away. So I take the potatoes cut them like this, put them in a pan, bring all the liquid, whatever you choose to use. In fact, if you had miso in your fridge, that'd be awfully good too. Anything to, to add flavor. Um, but you can really um, cook these in about, it took probably about 15 minutes to come up to a boil, maybe less than that, maybe 10 minutes to come up to a boil, and then another 10 um, of cooking to get it fully cooked so that these were soft enough that we could mash them. So then, I drained them, put them back in the pan with a, just a little bit of the liquid, and I mashed them with my favorite ricer. This, if you guys don't have this, you might have one of the zigzag ones, or you might have, you know, a bunch of different things, but a big fork. You know, these things honestly were soft enough that you could, um, you could have mashed them with a fork or the back of a spoon. This was super easy. And the flavor that you get off of these, like I've not salted this, there's no pepper, there's no spices yet. This is literally just potatoes cooked in chicken stock. Um, they already have a ton of flavor, already. So then what are we gonna do with the greens and what kind of greens do we have? So we're just gonna set the potatoes aside. Then as always, when I get to the next step, 
I have to start with onions because that's where I have to bloom the um, the spices. So I've got, I put olive oil in the pan. I put about half of a large onion, you know, so the onion was, was a lot bigger than the medium I told you guys to get. Um, so I did about half of it, but you'll know about how much, you know, you're going to want to have. And then I put a ton of spices into it. Um, I put smoked paprika. I put my favorite garlic in a tube, because why? This is midweek cooking. We have to do it fast. Then I put in there, I put umami in. So you know I normally use this as my umami. I was going to put a video up this weekend because I actually made my own umami. Let me come back to that story. This is really good stuff, but I'm going to come back to the umami story. I want to keep going. I'm going to turn the heat up on this back up again because I wanted to, to make sure we got that. Then I got, and where this whole dish came from, is I got my CSA box. I got all the drop off last night of my veggies. And look at this. So this has been sitting out a bit, but this is rainbow shard. Look at how beautiful that is. And I got some, I got a whole batch of it in there. And I have some that's burgundy, I got some that's yellow, I got some that's white. And what I did was, I'll show you. I just cut it up, cut it up. I cut the stems off and then I cut it into a pile. Um, so I, I, could, I could cut this one as well. Then I took the stems off and we're gonna make pickles out of those in just a little bit. But let's, um, let's get the green. Now I can hear this sizzling. So I'm going to take my greens, and I added a bit of spinach to it just to make sure I had enough. All right, so spinach going in first. I took my knife, put my knife through it just so that when we put it in the mashed potatoes, I don't get big shards of it stuck in my teeth. Can't stand that. I'll show you the, the rainbow shard again. So pretty, and I love it just cut up. All right, beautiful. And then we're gonna turn this a little bit so it gets the spices from underneath. I'm gonna put a little bit more salt and pepper in just because I added more volume to this. There's a little salt. Although, you know, I, I usually over season the, the onions underneath because I know what's coming next. But a little more salt and pepper. And again, I do it 50-50 so that the salt and pepper is roughly the same, um, same ratio. So let's just cook this. We're gonna let that cook. All right. Look at that, that pan's gonna cook down to just beautifully and I'm gonna put these potatoes right into the greens and we're gonna have a beautiful concoction and we're not gonna need any dairy to make this um, come together. All right, so the other, the other piece of this is peppers. Let me grab my peppers. So what I thought is everyone's done stuffed peppers. They all, everyone's got a family recipe. They might have, you know, the, the standard is ground beef and rice. And I'm like, you know, maybe a little tomato sauce. Ah, that kind of is like, eh, to me, you know? Um, I like a lot more flavor than that. So I thought, what if we could do breakfast for dinner? And I found a lot of people actually had that idea. I'm not, this is not original. This is not, you know, this is not mine, but I'll show you. What I thought we could do is take that cool cannon, put it right into the peppers, make a well, crack an egg into it, bake them, and then have a beautiful, beautiful, almost like a hash brown underneath this. But you aren't getting a ton of potato because what can fit in here is maybe about two tablespoons, maybe three, and you're going to have more greens than you are um, potato in that um, underneath that egg, but you're going to have just enough that your brain goes, ah, I've got potato. So all I did to this is while I was heating up the oven, my oven is at 400. It's waiting for these to be done so they can go back in. Um, but while it was heating up, I put these in for maybe 10 minutes. And you can see, look at, they're a little bit softer. So then I don't have to worry about whether they get to the right texture when I put the egg in them. I can cook the egg and the egg's going to cook in about 10 minutes. Once, uh, once I've got this stuffed. Let's just check the greens. The greens, you can cook to however you like it. So you could cook these down to almost nothing, or you could cook them to just a wilt. This is a little more than a wilt, and a little less than a saute. <laughs> and I think, I think I'm gonna be about done here, because I kinda like the, I like the spinach here. Let me bring it up a little bit up. I like the spinach and the rainbow chard. 
to have just a little bit of texture. Look at how pretty that is. So you can see the, the gorgeous burgundy that's in the middle of the rainbow shard, that cooks down in the hill. I just, yeah, see that keeps its fiber um, and crunch. You can see the onions in there and all the spices that are coating this. So then, before I mix this all together, I'm gonna do a little, a little hash brown trick. All right, so I have all these beautiful bits down in the bottom of the pan. And I'm gonna take a little bit more olive oil. And again, I love all the olive oil coming out of California. All right, put a couple of tablespoons there. Then, once that's hot, we'll give it just a second. Then we're gonna put the potatoes down in there and we're gonna let them kind of get a little crispy on the bottom side before we mix the whole thing together. So it should be, there we go, I can, I can hear it sizzling. So let's get, let's just make sure, yeah, you can see what I'm doing. And then we're gonna put a little more seasoning because we can into these potatoes. But look at how creamy these potatoes are. Not, no butter, no milk, no cream, no cheese, no cream cheese. These are just straight up potatoes. Now, no lie, these have, these have carbs, so they're not, you know, this is not a freebie, but they're not nearly the calorie suck that they are when you get them and they're fully, fully cheesed up. And I, honest to goodness, do not think they need all of that. Okay, we're gonna let that just do its thing for a little bit. So while that's cooking, let's talk about, let's talk about this, umami powder. You know I have this fascination with, with umami powder. You know this. I, I think I use it at least every other episode. It may come into something almost every episode. And it's one of those things that when the bottle is empty, I immediately get on in my car and go to Trader Joe's. So I thought, how cool would it be if I could make my own compound? I think it would be tastier. I think it would be better. I could control the ingredients that went into it because the other thing you all know about me is that I don't like to really buy too many compound spices because you never know what goes into them. So I went on a quest. Now, Trader Joe's very nicely put the list of everything that's in it. And we know when we read labels, it goes from volume, top of the list to the bottom of the list. So most to the least. So I had a pretty good sense of where I was headed. Then, and I forgot to keep the labels, and I'm sorry, but then I was in the grocery store, I was in the produce section, and I found these um, Melissa's dried mushrooms. She had all different kinds. This one's a shiitake, but she had um, portobellos, she had some oyster mushrooms. I bought five packages, so two and a half ounces. What turned out to be $26 worth of mushrooms, okay? That was $26 worth of mushrooms turned into one cup of powder <laughs> before I put anything else in it. And I thought, oh my God, this is the most expensive umami stuff out there. I mean, this is like $3. I could buy, I could buy 10 of these for the amount that this cost me to make this. So there, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And, I, and I'll research that some more. But if you were going, she said she'd put a video up about umami powder and she didn't, that's why. But this step, I have to tell you, like, let me just, the smell of it, like I, I love this stuff, but it does not smell like this does. So this is three different kinds of, of wild mushrooms that it, I just put in the food processor. I put it in and, and actually the first time I put it in, it didn't quite um, process properly because it was still a little bit wet. So I put it out on a baking sheet, put it in a 250 degree oven for about 10 minutes and dried them out just a little more and then put it back in and it worked beautifully. Then I added dry mustard because that was on the list. I added a bunch of thyme. I added, oh, I put um, dehydrated onions into the mix when I was in the food processor. Um, I added some garlic uh, and I don't think there was, and salt and pepper and that was it. This stuff is beautiful, but I can't afford to be doing that all the time. So I'm gonna come up with some better alternatives to, to, my, to my golden umami powder. But for today, I'm gonna to put a little more umami powder um, over the top of the mushrooms, because I put it into the greens. 
And this is the kind of dish that it's like, it's simple, it's budget friendly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just treat it right with the spices. Um, but yeah, so we can see, oh my gosh, look at this. So now we've got, we've got a little bit of crispy on the bottom. We're just gonna mix the greens and all those spices from the bottom up into the into the uh, potatoes. <laughs> this is this is so beautiful, you guys, and the smell. And the nice thing about a dish like this is you could do anything with this. Like if you wanted to serve this as part of an Indian dinner, you could change up the spices to curry. If you wanted to serve this to more of an Asian style dinner, you could change it to more umami and put and put some um, tamari sauce into this. Um, if you wanted it more Latin, you could put more smoked paprika and some chili powder, more garlic, maybe some cumin. I mean, you could really, um, this is one of those bases that is just perfect. Okay, let me, let me test the seasoning. Fresh pork. And you guys got to call me out sometimes too. I was watching some of my old videos as I was uploading them to Vimeo and, and I was double dipping with some of my forks. So <laughs> don't, don't be afraid to call me out. I sometimes get talking and I forget what I'm doing. I'm usually pretty good about that stuff when I'm with a client, but uh, my own kitchen, not nearly as good as I should be. I need a bit more salt, but that's it. This is, this is ready to go. All right, so this is your filling for the peppers. All right. Okay, let me make space here, and I'm gonna turn the, um, and we're gonna get this going over on the other cutting board. All right, let's see. Let's see, how are we doing? Oh, beautiful. Not too bad. Did everyone make it? Oh, awesome. <laughs> okay, I really am getting a little bit better, huh? <laughs> a little bit. Okay, all right, so we've got the filling. You can see it. Now, in a perfect world, I would totally let this cool down, um, and I would not go, go at this right away. Um, I let the peppers cool down because those were done earlier. Uh, the, the oven is heated up, so I'm going to go ahead, but I'm going to be a little careful with this. And what's going to be a little funky is where I'm going to um, crack some eggs over the top of some of them. Some of them are going to go into the freezer because I've got three, six, nine, I've got 12 of these. And that's too many. I just need three for tonight. Um, the other nine I'm not going to crack an egg into because they are better if I wrap them in plastic wrap, put them in the freezer, and then bring them out, crack the egg into it, and do the 10 minutes in the oven. Okay? Um, so that's what I would do. Now the other thing is, so for my vegan friends, I've been thinking about this all day. Thank you. I think it was I think it was Rhonda who asked me the first question. Uh, what could my vegan friends do? So my vegan friends could do a number of different things. You can see, I could sit down with a bowl of this and, and go to town, which wouldn't be wouldn't be the right thing to do. <laughs> but if I put this in here and watch, what I want you to see is really just how much goes into a bell pepper. This is a rather, rather large, and I like cutting them. I like cutting them long way, this way, because I think they I think they stuff better, easier, um, and I think the egg works better this way. But I don't care if you want to do it and you want to cut the tops off and make cute little cute little boats out of them. Go for it. I had some. Most of these peppers are from my CSA, and so I had things like this. <laughs> they aren't going to be the prettiest, but they're certainly going to be delicious. Like I had this one. Yeah, that one's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but it's going to go in the freezer. And you know what? Someone's going to be so thankful that they got a dish, you know, a couple weeks from now. They're going to be like, oh my gosh, look at this, a stuffed pepper. All right. So then I got it in there. I put about two and a half tablespoons, maybe closer to three, just depends upon the size. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it. First off, I push it down into the corners and then I make just, can you see that? Just a little bit of a well. And that's so that when I crack the egg on it, it doesn't roll everywhere. So I'm going to see if I can make the well a little bit with a little bit more clean edges. Because I've done this before. And I've had egg all over my baking pan. Egg on my face. Ha! <laughs> Sorry. It's been a long day already. 
but I'm so glad to be here with you guys. All right, so there's one, okay? I'm gonna do two more. I'm gonna pick pretty ones to do, and then I'll stuff the other ones later, but I just wanna get three of them into the oven so that I've got dinner in, um, you know, in about 10 minutes, and I can show you what these look like when they're done. And then we'll make some pickles while we're waiting, waiting for this. All right, let's get see another one. A couple of tablespoons, and then let's pick one more. Oh, here, we'll just do, we'll do everyone in yellow, and then no one fights over the color. <laughs> Doesn't matter how old we get, we still fight for things. <laughs> All right, a little bit more in this one. This one may be my son's. This is the boy that could live on carbs. I've, I've had to break him into our ways of, of sneaking veggies in. And he's 25 now, but he still he still likes carbs better than veggies. He's getting there. Work in progress. Okay, so let's move these over here. I will um, I'll do those later, and I'll, I'll post pictures of it with the recipe. All right. Now what we want to do is make sure that this is this is sitting as evenly as we can make it. Again, Ben here done this. And, all right, so then what I did is I cracked an egg into here. You can see that? Yep, this is just a little espresso cup. It just made it easier instead of cracking it in here and having to fish shells out. Done that too, okay? And then, so this is, you can see, I don't know if you can see the, oh, yeah, see, I'm gonna have a hard time because these potatoes are still hot. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And we're just going to let some of the white kind of ooze out. It is what it is. Let's see if I can get this one to look a little pretty. I promise you, no one's going to be looking at this egg and whether this looks pretty or not. These are, these smell so good. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah, see, some of the white has just got to come out because it's too much. It's too much in there. And then we haven't talked about what vegan options could be in here. What would be really good? What I've served actually this cold cannon in before is I've stuffed portobellos with this cold cannon and it's unbelievably good, unbelievably good. Portobello mushroom that's been, um, that's been cooked in that same chicken broth, cold cannon on the inside, and then a piece of, one single piece of smoked salmon on the top of it. Really, really delicious. All right, let's see if I can make this last one more of a showpiece, but it's not looking like it because I've got, I've got it kind of lopsided. I did not plan these. I usually have prettier bell peppers, but I've chosen to go the CSA route and I believe in it. Here, I'm going to wedge these all together so that they sit upright. There we go. Let's get that in there. There we go. All right. Wash the hands and then these are ready to go in the oven. All right, I'm gonna hold them up so you can see them up close because they're they're actually prettier than I made them look. See, look at how pretty those are with the little egg on top. Not as much white in there as I would have wanted, but still very pretty. All right, these are going in. I set the timer so I don't forget. All right, now last thing we want to do. I had all the stems, all the stems from, um, from my, from my what? I had all the stems from the, from the rainbow shard, from this, okay? Shannon says, I grew that shard this summer for the first time. Oh my gosh. Oh, I cannot wait to, to, uh, to hear about that. Oh, and Carla, yeah, this is, isn't this gorgeous shard? Like, I love the color of it. And they all came in different colors. Let me show you what what the stems look like. So I did a little bit of knife work and I cut the stems. Like each of the stems were about, I don't know if you've seen, I had a stem. Where did my stem go? Oh, I must not have kept the full stem, but the stems are about on the end of this, um, at least what I got, you know, they're about, about yay long and about that wide, right? So I was able to cut the stems into a little more than a cup of, um, of stems. And these stems, just by themselves, just raw. These are good. These would be really good in a salad. So I could do that. But I kind of thought what I would do, let's heat this up and I'll show you what it is. 
I kind of thought what I would do is just make a simple pickle out of it because they're so, so good. Hi, Ying, how are you? So good to see you, yes. So I'm gonna turn these into pickles. What I put in the, in the pan here, let's show you. Ah. Okay, can you see that beautiful liquid? I've partially cooked it already so, so that it's not horrible to cook or horribly long on the cooking. But I did 50-50 rice vinegar. And you know, I've, I've used this before, champagne vinegar. They say white wine vinegar, you know, so 50-50 white wine vinegar with the rice vinegar. I thought the champagne was, was the way to go. And I changed up the recipe quite a bit. So I did about a quarter cup and about a quarter cup, you know, maybe a little bit less. I did one tablespoon of sugar. Now the recipe I found called for, um, called for three tablespoons. There's no way. These pickles would be so sweet. Now we don't need them that sweet. This does not need to be dessert. It just needs to be a little bit sweet. And then I put um, two pinches of salt in there. And that's it. And all I did was put it over medium heat until this um, raw sugar melted. So it melted. Now I'm just going to bring it back up to heat because you want to put it over the top of this hot. Um, so we're going to give that a second. I'm going to look and see. A random a cute top. It's actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a dress and it's, it's, um, a special dress that does SPF 50. So I don't have to wear sunblock on here. I wear sunblock on the face, but, but not on the dress. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks you guys. Thanks Brenda. You guys are awesome. <laughs> oh, you can, you can hang out with me anytime. <laughs> yeah. So Cynthia, you're going to want to, you're going to want to swap the egg out to, uh, to something else. Maybe just a little bit more of the, um, of the filling. Maybe some mushroom, um, you know, uh, maybe a few uh, roasted chickpeas. Roasted chickpeas would be super good on the top of that. It would put a little bit of a crunch on it. Um, you could also put some of the crispy um, quinoa that we make. Uh, we could put that on there. And let's see. Let's see who else. <laughs> John Clark, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, just without the egg. I just wanted it for, um, you know, for because I wanted a, a protein in it. So the thing with the cold cannon. Let me finish the cold cannon story. So this is a um, this is a Celtic thing that's normally done around um, Halloween. It's it is um, it's done to ward off, you know, bad stuff. They do kind of the um, the New Orleans thing where they, in the coal cannon, they put coins um, and they put rags, which sounds a little nasty to me. But if you found a coin, you were going to be rich. If you found a rag, you were going to be poor the next year. So um, I felt like it was a little a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that was that was it. They had another one where um, they would someone would put a stick in, and they, whoever found the stick could beat their wife. And I thought that's yeah, that's not my kind of deal. But you know, um, it's a different time. Okay, so this is hot. This is really hot because I have just just done that. So let me put this up so you can see. We're just we're making pickles, and this is this is as hard as pickle making gets. Now, what I'm being very careful of is I don't want to uh, spill that on my hand because it's hot. But let's get, let me get, I'm sure I've got it here, a lid. Because then what we can do is this. All right. So that liquid, let me put that up there. That liquid is all over it. These, these aren't pickled yet, but... Do you know what the hot liquid does? So it's vinegar based. That's big. It's vinegar with a little bit of sugar and salt. It brings out the earthiness of the shark. Like I could see this going well with beets because this is, mm. oh, this is going on my big ass salad tomorrow. Definitely. These are, these are really, really, really good. <laughs> I am surprisingly good. So we've got that. Then when I serve this, what I'm going to want to do whenever I serve something that's cooked like this, like cooked down and kind of casserole-y or, you know, kind of warm comfort food, I like to pair with it something fresh. So let me get, when we, um, when we get to plating, you'll see I, I did all my cutting today so that I am ready for um, salads this week and I'm, you know, I'm ready for the next dishes. Oh, you guys have to come back on Thursday. 
we are rethinking nachos in a way that you are prepared for. We're going to blow your mind with um, with nachos on Thursday. But so, anyways, I did a bunch of cookie cutting of scallions. This will be really good, especially with that potato that's in the in the pepper. And then look at these. These are the microgreens. This is the daikon radish from my garden. So I grew all of these. So now it's time to go get new seeds and start again. Look at how pretty those are. And they seriously, these little guys smell just like a radish. Um, and they taste like it. Like they've got that beautiful sort of like bite. Um, Ying, you're right. An extra mushroom layer would be so good. And in fact, the, um, let me get that out. I've got... Because you know I don't throw anything away. I still have some of the mushroom juice out. This would be unbelievable on top. These are those mushrooms that were cooked in garlic and thyme and white wine. So this would be, I'm going to put this on top actually of some of them. <laughs> so we'll use, we'll use the mushroom juice out. That's really good. Let me just peek at the, at the uh, peppers. Okay, they're not the prettiest, but they're going to be fine. We're just going to give it a moment more. So then, the last thing to talk about, I pulled this out specifically. So one pepper on this plate is going to be about perfect. I've told some of you about this, but I love having red plates in the, in the kitchen. I don't use them every day, but they're kind of nice in sort of the rotation of things. They've actually done studies that say that when you eat off a red or a blue plate, that you tend to eat less. And I kind of think, they, did, they don't know why. They, they tested for a number of things and they, they could not even hypothesize why. My hypothesis, and I'd love to um, have you guys tell me what you think. Um, you can just leave me comments there, but I think it's because you want to see the border. Like you, you put the plate in, you know, you put the food in here and you want to see that red on the outside. So you kind of keep it where it's supposed to be down in the plate rather than spilling over the edges. So that's my theory, um, but we'll, you know, We'll see. Um, so I'm going to eat up a red plate tonight, and I'm going to have one one of those peppers that I'm really excited about. Um, let's see. What else? Let's see if there are any questions that I can answer. Yeah, so, so many people on a diet, Shannon, you bring up a really great point. Many people, um, when they, especially when they start some of the extreme dieting, they, they start knocking things like potatoes off the list um, because they, they have a sense that because of the carb load in it, that they're going to gain weight from it. Um, and I'm here to tell you, I, I think you can do, assuming it's not such an emotional trigger for you, that it, that it triggers you to, to weigh overeat. I think you can eat anything if you're smart about it. If you manage the portion size of it, if you change it up so it's not loaded, it's not the potato that's all the, that has all the heavy fat. It's the sour cream and the butter and the cheese and the and the milk and the cream that's used. It's all of those things that have the, the heavy calories. So I, I'm a firm believer that you um, you know you build things like that in, into your diet in um, in moderation. So that's my my theory. All right, guys, come on, tell me what what more questions? No, okay. Make a great burger, absolutely. Oh, crumple foil, okay, well you know my theory, I don't like to use foil at all. I love the idea of it, I probably crumple up um, parchment paper, because I don't like foil on my food. Okay, so let's just show you, this isn't quite done, this is still gonna go, but I think, I just want you to see what it looks like before we sign off, because I don't think it's gonna finish before I, before I get to the end. But look at how pretty those are. Look at how pretty they are. And the yellow yolk with the, um, with the yellow pepper is so particularly pretty. Okay, that's just, these are so hot. Yeah, you can see these are not quite done yet. But look at, let me come up here. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? So these are going back in. Um, what I will do, I promise you all, as soon as these are done, when they come out of the oven, I'm going to take a great picture of it, plated, and I will post it with the with the recipe. I really sincerely hope you all try this because this is budget friendly, it's diet friendly, its flavor profile is out of control because potatoes are perfect for uh, 
for pudding with um, just about any um, any flavor at all. Okay, so this is um, th this is the the um, Food 2.5 Kitchen, the Food 2.5 program where we find twice the flavor, and I think we did way more than that today, and half the calories, and I think we did way more than that too. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm feeling very successful today. Um, but thank you very much. If you're new here, I saw a couple of new, um, you know, a new couple of new people making comments, and I love that. And if you feel compelled, if you like what I'm doing, um, like my page, love my page, follow me, um, and uh, and you're welcome to go back to any of the videos. I've got more than 20 videos now up on the uh, Facebook page, and if you want to just see the videos, you're more than welcome to go to um, our Vimeo account as well, which is vimeo.com slash food2.5, okay? So that's it. I'm Sandy Rask. You guys have a great day, and I really sincerely hope to see you on Thursday for nachos. Talk to you soon.